Well, Razorback fans, Arkansas is officially going to the Liberty Bowl, which isn't exactly surprising, but it is familiar territory as we'll give some reactions to Arkansas taking on Kansas over there in Memphis. We'll also talk about the return of K.J. Jefferson, who made his announcement right as soon as the weekend was getting started. And this Razorback basketball team continues to impress, especially with Nick Smith getting a lot more minutes. It's all going to be coming up on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I'm your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. As uh, I'm still, as you can probably tell from my voice, trying to battle all this junk that's going around. So I figured it'd be done by now, but it's not. I'm on the ending part of it. So I guess you just have to deal with my voice sounding a little bit froggy here on the podcast today. So I hope you can just bear with me. But either way, it was a uh, pretty wild weekend when it came to all the different types of sporting events that were going on and uh, all the different stuff that, you know, people wanted to talk about and that actually had direct impacts on Arkansas, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And, you know, it's funny because right now the portal is officially opened at the time of the recording of this podcast. So there may be some things that happen for Arkansas that uh, will be going on as soon as I do the podcast or after I do the podcast. So each day we'll try to keep you updated on that. But uh, as of right now, knock on wood, no key contributors for Arkansas have uh, entered into the portal, at least none that uh, are surprising at this point. So let's hope that it stays that way for the sake of Arkansas. But either way, it is official. The Razorbacks will be heading to the Liberty Bowl once again to face the Kansas Jayhawks. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> we kind of expected that this would be the case, or at least it was one of the more realistic bowl games that Arkansas would be getting the invite. And uh, Sam Pittman actually found out while he was on recruiting trip, because that's what he and his staff have been doing this entire time, or at least since they've been able to, is uh, visiting particular players, doing visits and whatnot. And uh, it was funny because uh, Sam Pittman, actually when he found out, was in the uh, vehicle alongside Barry Odom. And, you know, there was rumors going around or at least some reports saying that Barry Odom was the favorite to take the Tulsa head coaching job and all the all Pittman was asked about. And this is according uh, to Tom Murphy and the uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Apparently, Sam Pittman says, here's all I'm saying. I'm in Texas trying to walk in, uh, into a home visit and the old boy sitting next to me and his name Barry Odom. So he, he was he was kind of been uh, pretty funny about uh, him being on there in the recruiting trip. So we'll see. What ends up happening as far as that goes? And we'll give some coaching updates on that too. But they found out it was the Liberty Bowl. Again, it's not surprising. And honestly, depending on what the team looks like at this point in time and how many players are going to be available for the bowl game, how many players are going to play in the bowl game, that's going to be the ultimate question. But honestly, and maybe this is just me looking too much into it. Maybe it's me overlooking or maybe feeling too confident about it because I think that there's reasons to kind of believe and understand that Arkansas football was disappointing this year. It's not to say that anything is easy and that you can't take anything for granted as far as that goes too. But playing Kansas in the Liberty Bowl, honestly, is a uh, is a great matchup for Arkansas because they should win this game. Because Kansas was one of the better stories of college football. You know, earlier this year, they got off to a really good start. Everyone was talking about them and saying, wow, how how – how it's all changed just under Coach Leopold. And in his first year, turns everything around and uh, it gets it going, or at least in his uh, first uh, period of time there at Kansas. Getting him to a bowl game itself is pretty impressive and pretty incredible. And if you even look at their schedule this year, which obviously, uh, you know, you got to take into consideration for the uh, the conference that they played in and non-conference and everything. They actually started off pretty strong at 5-0. and they beat T Tennessee Tech, they beat West Virginia, they beat Houston, they beat Duke, and they beat Iowa State. So they got off to a 5-0 and start, but they finished 6-6. Six and six. So they went 1-6 and six down the stretch, all in the Big 12, where their lone game that they won down the stretch was against Oklahoma State, which you talk about a team that really just spiraled out of control. But they lost to TCU, which of course we know was in the playoff. Lost to Oklahoma. Lost to Baylor, lost to Texas Tech, lost to Texas, lost to Kansas State. So 
their best win this year is Oklahoma State. Because the only other game that they really won in the conference besides uh, beating them, uh, beating Oklahoma State, was Iowa State, who finished one and eight, and West Virginia, who finished three and six. So there are two bottom teams there in the Big 12 are the two teams that Kansas actually ended up beating. So, yeah, that was not a, I mean, not a great year. Great year for Kansas, but not a great year for a college football team that you should be concerned about. I guess you could say Duke was probably their best win. Uh, as far as overall, because Duke did finish eight and four. So they did have a decent year other than the fact that they lost to Kansas. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, that's a kind of a, the matchup that you're looking at right now. And I can't remember, at least not more in a, uh, anytime recently that Arkansas had played Kansas in football. I'm just glad that the Liberty Bowl decided to do us all a favor and have a little football matchup of the two teams that are going to be facing off in the national championship in basketball this upcoming season. It was really nice of them to do. But still, uh, just looking at some of the things about them, too, is that uh, Jaden Jalen Daniels, he was the one that got injured for Kansas earlier in the year, but he came back uh, in the end of the season. And so uh, he was a guy that obviously was very important to, uh, to, uh, to their uh, success this year. Also, uh, Kansas had not won more than three games in a season since 2009. So the fact that they went six and six this year again just kind of shows you like Keith Leopold may be the coach of the year, <laughs> trying to trying to make that uh, actually work. The Liberty Bowl is going to be Kansas' first bowl game since two thousand and eight, since uh, Mark Mangino was the coach there in Kansas. That's just that's just a wild thing to me to think about. It's been that long, but it truly has been that long. Now this is where I'm going to uh, really start to think uh, pretty highly of Arkansas and, and their chances in this game too. Because, again, you never want to – bowl games are weird because you never know what the teams are going to look like. You never know. You never know who's going to be playing, any of that. But here are just a few things to where if you just look at it statistically, there could be a lot of similarities between these two teams, and one of them being defensive woes. Now, we know Arkansas struggled with defense, but Kansas ranks 119th nationally in scoring defense. It's the fifth worst among Power 5 teams. They're also one of the – nation's worst teams in defending the run. They give up over almost 200 yards per game. And Arkansas ranks ninth nationally in rush offense. So you're talking about the two things, especially with defense, where Arkansas's offense, which say what you want, but assuming that KJ, assuming Rocket, assuming these guys play in the bowl game, and especially those where it's going to be their final game, whether it's a Dalton Wagner or, or whoever, this is going to be, one where Arkansas should just run all over Kansas and should have zero problems doing it. Like you should have Rocket Sanders in there going for well over 150, maybe two, maybe you have another 200 yard game. That should happen, but it's uh, yeah, that's that's going to be the key there too. Now on the other side of it, it looks like Arkansas is going to have with one of the things defensively that Arkansas has done a really good job at is that they have done really good at getting after the quarterback. Well, Kansas is actually one of the best teams at protecting the quarterback in the country. They only have uh, only five teams that have allowed fewer sacks than the Jayhawks. So the Jayhawks have only allowed nine sacks so far this year. So getting after the quarterback might be uh, pretty tough. And also the offensive line for Kansas is really good too because of that uh, because of that deal, not only in the pass protection, but also in the run. Because they're averaging nearly 200 yards a game on the ground as well. So offensively, this could be a high scoring game, just kind of depending on what it looks like, but I like Arkansas's chances a little bit better as far as that goes too. So yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I really do. Arkansas has not played Kansas since the teams completed a home and home agreement back in the early 1900s. Kansas has won, uh, won six, nothing in Fayetteville back in 1905 and then in 37 to five in Lawrence back in 1906. So Arkansas owes them. They owe them for that. Uh, some interesting other notes too. I think, uh, like some coaches stuff and, and whatnot. In fact, people forget Sam Pittman was actually an assistant coach at Kansas uh, during the 2001 season. And I think the Jeff Long angle is also pretty funny. The fact that both of these athletic or both of these football teams uh, had athletic directors of Jeff Long, where Arkansas, of course, had him for a while. And then he moves on to go and be the athletic director of Kansas. And we all saw how that went downhill from there. So those are just a few facts. And a few uh, things that are going to be going on for Kansas. Now, the question becomes, for a lot of you, is 
Why should I be excited about this? Some of you aren't. And that's why I kind of uh, tongue in cheek said over in the whiteboard behind me, hogs get liberty, but some prefer death. Now, maybe that's a little bit strong, but there are a lot of you that kind of, at least in replies and social media and stuff, kind of voice the displeasure of this bowl game where you're like, I don't care who this is dumb. The Liberty Bowl sucks. I did whatever. And I'm going to be watching Razorback basketball. I'm moving on to that. Okay, that's fine if you have that opinion. That's, that's just the way it is. But here's my take on the fact. I'm going to watch the game. I'm still going to care about the game. I'm still going to see and hope that Arkansas beats Kansas. To move on to 7-6, and six, I'm going to do all those things. And it's not because I'm completely and totally satisfied with a 7-6 and six year. That's what ends up being the case. It's not that at all. It's just that one of the things that taught me a lot, when, especially during the COVID years, that you can never take for granted whenever you have Razorback football to watch. And even if it's a game that doesn't seem to have a whole lot of significance on the season, or in some cases people throw out and call it a meaningless bowl game, all those things start to make you think about, well, remember that time we didn't have any football to watch? Remember when the Razorbacks, we wanted so desperately to see them and to see them in person, and we couldn't. It was a bad time. It was a bad time for everybody in college football. But I'm going to be hopeful. I'm still going to watch the games. I'm still going to root for them. I'm still going to hope they win, and I'll be excited if they do. Now, you can do both. You can be disappointed with the way that the season went while also being pretty excited about the possibilities that Arkansas has in front of them as far as being getting to this bowl game, the bowl practices, some of the players that get a lot of extra scrimmaging, whatever it may be. There's reasons to at least be fun and excited and hopeful that maybe some good can come from this bowl game too. Seven and six would be a lot better than six and seven. I don't want that to happen. I know Sam Pittman does not want that to happen because you want some positive momentum heading into the season where the lasting memory of this year was you finishing the season losing to a uh, poverty program in Missouri and then a Kansas team that is having an electric year at six and six, the best year that they've had by far in over a decade. It's the last, the last thing you want to do as far as a lasting memory goes. So as long as somebody's out there wearing the Razorback helmet, playing football, I'm going to watch. I'm going to care. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the game. I mean, Memphis is not that far. So there's the positive thing, too. I know I've said some things about the stadium and about the, the city and all of that. But, hey, if the bowl game's only two hours from me, it, it's worth going to. And I know a lot of people are going to be making the trip as well. So it's the holiday season, folks. It is. And we know that there are so many things you're trying to think about when it comes to gifts and gift ideas. Well, let me tell you about Omaha Steaks. He, imagine somebody giving you that gift, putting that in your stocking. Probably would want to make sure it's frozen before you do that. But still, that would be an incredible gift that everyone would appreciate. You know, because that's the thing. It's like, oh, what will they like? Will this person enjoy it? Whatever. Who wouldn't want an Omaha Steak? Nobody's going to say no to that. Nobody's going to say that that's a bad deal. So get in on this great deal that we're offering you here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks, they put together special curated gift packages to help take the guesswork out of trying to figure out, you know, what you want to get for these people. Well, go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code Locked On at checkout and you get $30 off your first order. 30 bucks it goes a long way, especially when you consider all the different steak options and packages that Omaha Steaks has to offer. It's a gift from the heart, and it's a gift that will be remembered with every single bite. I'll tell you that last year when Omaha Steaks uh, was kind enough to, to be partnering with us here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast, I ordered some. And it was awesome because not only did I have great steaks to choose from, but I was able to customize them in my own way, cook them in different ways, try new things in each and every time. And this is coming from someone that is not going to say I'm a professional in steaks, but every single time they were incredible because you get the highest quality meat possible with Omaha steaks. So get in on this folks. And you're, I know you're freaking out because you're trying to figure out what to get these people for your, for their gifts and whatnot. Get you some Omaha steaks and get you that discount. Take care of business. It's everything that you need to give in a gift. And it's simply perfect. They're perfectly aged, tender steaks, juicy burgers, 
decadent desserts, classic comfort meals, all that stuff. And with a gourmet gift from Omaha Steaks, it's a gift from the heart that they'll remember with every single bite. So check out this offer. 30 bucks off your order with a minimum order required. You can shop early by beating the sh shipping rush with the promo code locked on, all one word. Whether you're shopping for friends, family, colleagues, or for yourself, every order is backed by their unconditional money back guarantee. So check out Omaha Steaks at omahasteaks.com using promo code locked on. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on our Locked On Razorbacks podcast, some good news that happened over the weekend, too, as uh, I know people were wondering about Arkansas and whether or not they'd uh, lose some guys to the portal, lose some guys to the NFL draft, and we'll be moving on. I think everybody kind of had an idea, or at least was fine with how last week went, but the big question is, and just because of the way that the portal works now, is you got to really hope that your key contributors come back. Because if we've seen in time, and Arkansas has uh, been on the uh, wrong end of this, that players get contacted, in some cases even before they hit the portal, and they're like, hey, these other schools are like, let's come, come here. You'll be a part of a better team, or you'll be a part of uh, your home state team, whatever it may be. And those guys jump into the portal and go to those teams. Uh, you know, last year at the Greg Brooks, Joe Fouché thing, when they went to LSU, those were key contributors to the Razorback football team, and they went to ended up going to LSU, which I still think it rubs me the wrong way, which we you know we'll talk about that and I'm sure at other times too, but I still think it was weird that someone who was voted captain of the team by his team left to the end of the portal to go to an SEC West rivalry. I think that's wrong, but hey, it's neither here nor there. Because one player that did not enter into the portal, that honestly I didn't have any concern, but I know a lot of you did, was KJ Jefferson. Or maybe the fact that K.J. Jefferson was going to go pro. These were the questions and concerns that Razorback fans had to see exactly how it all play out and knowing that uh, the current state of college football is always extremely mysterious. But on Friday, I thought it was interesting. They did it uh, on Friday, like during a news dump time. K.J. Jefferson took to Instagram and took to Twitter, took to all of his social media and kind of did the old bait and switch approach. It was pretty funny. He said... Quote, I want to thank God for directing me to Arkansas to start my college career. I want to thank my mom for always being there through the good times and the bad. I've learned so much from Coach Pittman and Coach Bryles on and off the field that can't thank them enough. As for Arkansas fans, I have always loved playing for you all, and the support you have given me is unmatched. With that said, it's time to fulfill my dreams. And my dreams wouldn't be complete without one more year on the hill. So really uh, took it into, I was like, oh, jeez. It's like until that final sentence happened. You're like, dude, what are you doing to us? You're killing us. But he, he just decided to come back for another year. And again, it's not like it's some sort of shocking revelation. It's just more like, wow, okay. Like, it's good to have him back. Because you know you're getting him back. You know you're getting Rocket Sanders back. And so those two guys alone, because they're your two best offensive players without question, those are huge dudes to get back for next season. So even though he's draft eligible, he decided to come back. He dealt with injury a lot this year, which we know, but uh, Arkansas is 15 and eight in games that KJ has started. And uh, he's 6'3", 242 pounds. Still see that weight and it's just incredible. But there's no doubt that there was a huge difference whenever he was in the game and when not, he was in the game. And, uh, and when KJ was in the lineup, uh, Arkansas averaged, uh, 30, 34 points per game and 471 yards of offense. So huge difference between when KJ is in, when KJ is not in, he had 20, about 2,400 yards, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions, rushed for over 500 yards and was second on the team and also had uh, seven touchdowns on the ground too. So, uh, he's eighth in UA history in passing yards, seventh in touchdown passes. And he's actually tied with Matt Jones for seventh with a uh, 417 completion. So. Uh, yeah, he will, if Jefferson is, he's about 2,300 yards shy of Tyler Wilson's school record of passing yards and 18 touchdowns short of Brandon Allen's record. So if KJ has another huge year next year, which I don't see why he wouldn't, he will be the all time leading passer and, uh, touchdown, uh, passing touchdown, uh, leader in Razorback football history. So really tells you. What, what he's going to be up against and how he's going to be handling it. But I just think this is so huge for Arkansas. I think we all can understand that. 
it's a I'm not saying KJ Jefferson is like the best quarterback in, in the country and he's going to win the Heisman. So, you know, people who always take it to different levels is, is always really annoying. But no, he's not to that level. But I love KJ Jefferson. He's going to be, especially if he has another big year this upcoming year, he's going to be one of my favorite quarterbacks Arkansas has ever had because he's just a gamer. He doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes, although he, he's made some and some have been really big, but. He doesn't make a lot of them. He obviously has the respect of his team. He obviously has great playmaking ability. He obviously is doing really well in, in the Kendall Brawls offense whenever he's in there. And he's a tough dude. He's a warrior. He's all the things that you want to have in a great quarterback in college football. And anytime that you can have someone like that coming back for another year, in a crucial year for Sam Pittman and for Arkansas to try to make sure that this past season, this type of year, does not happen again next year. Having K.J. Jefferson behind center is about as big time as you could have it. We'll see how the rest of the team plays out. We'll see all the pieces that get put in there. You know, what's the wide receiver room going to look like? What about the tight ends? What about the offensive line? Is Kendall Bryles staying? Like all those questions, yes. But if you were going to say, hey, what's the biggest piece? What's the biggest thing that you want back this year from last year? KJ Jefferson's number one. You cannot put enough emphasis on quarterback play and how important it is to the success of any team, but especially a team like Arkansas. And especially having an experienced quarterback like KJ Jefferson. I mean, three years, he's going to be a starter. Not many teams can say that, but every team wants that. So it's good to have him coming back. I know it's exciting to see how it's all going to play out for, for Arkansas, but we'll keep an eye on the portal and all that and give you some updates on that too. But we will talk some Razorback basketball because I know a lot of you are interested in that as well. But first, folks, at Locked On Razorbacks, we believe that home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family a gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. Right now, Simply Safe is offering all of you locked on Razorbacks listeners 40% off a new security system. So don't put this off. 40% off. So here's why I love it, and here's why you'll love it too. If you're traveling over the holidays, you want to make sure your home's protected. You got a lot of valuables there. I mean, that's where you put all the things that mean the most to you, whether it's Actual valuables that you keep locked away, valuables that you have as far as furniture and, and appliances. And also maybe it's some pets that you have at home that you value as well. Maybe when you're out to work, whatever it is, Simply Safe is what keeps you feeling that safe. Where you, hey, hey, no matter what, when I leave my home, I'm good to go. And even when I'm at home, I know that if something happens, I'm going to be protected as well. So don't miss out on this great opportunity. For Simply Safe, seriously, it's forty percent off. You can't get a better deal than that with the highest level and the highest in security systems that you'll ever see. It'll all be de de dedicated by the app too. So if you ever want to check things when it comes to cameras, when it comes to statuses, you can download the Simply Safe app, which is top rated, and you can be in complete control of your system. You can arm or disarm, unlock for a guest if they need to get into the house, access your cameras, any of those things. So don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. So get 40% off the new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no place and there's no safe like Simply Safe. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I'm going to do something with Rowdy there. Uh, Razorback basketball, taking care of business once again. I love it. I know that this team still got a lot way, long ways to go as far as feeling how good they are and know how far they're going to go. <coughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, so, you got another great performance out of them against San Jose State this past Saturday at Bud Walton Arena. And this was honestly one of the few games that Arkansas just trounced them, just beat the dog out of them. 
Louisville was a pretty big win, easy win, I felt like, for Arkansas. But there were obviously some things that, you know, was close and, you know, still you didn't have Nick Smith and, like, all those things, it was kind of just still up in the air. But this game against San Jose State, Arkansas won 99 to 58. So you're talking about a 41 point win. It's pretty impressive, especially when you consider in the second half. Look, like, listen to these numbers for Arkansas in the second half. Arkansas shot 76% from the field, 72% from three point land, and 83% from the free throw line. Yeah, that's a way of uh, closing out. Closing it out and, and doing big things. Trevin Brazil had another great game. He led all scores 23 points out of him. He goes eight of nine from the field, came off the bench, played 30 minutes. Also had five rebounds for him. A steal, as well as two assists, two blocks. Really great game out of him. Ricky Council, once again, does Ricky Council things. 17 points, uh, one assist, three steals for him, three rebounds. Uh, played a lot, had a great game too. Even Jalen Graham got off the bench and made the most out of his nearly 12 minutes, got 11 points out of him. But honestly, the story for a lot of people, and for me especially, is in the first half, Nick Smith Jr. He started this game, got his first start as a Razorback, and came in and did some great things. 16 points out of him in 25 minutes of play, roughly 24, 25 minutes of play. Goes 6 of 14, 3 of 5 from three-point land, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, gets 5 assists as well, 0 turnovers. Now, you're going to look at that stat line and be like, okay, well, that's not exactly the greatest stat line I've ever seen. No, it's not. But for a guy that's coming back in slowly but surely, that's what I want to see. Three of five from three-point land. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Arkansas needs three-point shooting? Yeah, yeah, they do. And they got it. Hopefully, Nick Smith shows some consistency there. But he, he's just like a – he's a guy that creates his own shots. He's got a lot of confidence. And you may see some games where he doesn't shoot – you know, very efficiently as far as, you know, maybe shoots under 40% or, you know, under 50%, whatever it may be. Because in this game, he goes 6 of 14. But you see it. You see what everybody's excited about. You see all the things and all the reasons why people think that he's going to be huge for Arkansas and why he'll probably be a top five pick in the NBA draft. So Arkansas is just continuing to grow. It's good to see Devo get back into the game as well. Just, I'm hoping that this keeps going, man. I'm hoping that they just continue to get better and better and better from this all. 22 assists for them in this game, 11 turnovers, eight steals. I know it's San Jose State. I get it. I totally get it. But that's what I want to see. That elite type play. That's what I want to see. Just got a few more games left of the non conference schedule before it gets real. You got a big one against Oklahoma coming up in Tulsa as well. Oh boy, it's just hard not to not to get too much into it. Temper the expectations. So let's just settle down. Let's ride and enjoy this journey. And hopefully this Razorback basketball team can continue on. But before, real quick though, I had to show you this great clip from uh from the game where uh, Cade Arbogast was able to come into the game as a walk-on and uh ended up uh, hitting the three at the end of the game where the place goes nuts. I have the video here and it may be a little loud for you that are listening in, so just be on the heads up. But just what a great video. Uh, to end the game for Arkansas. Yeah, seeing the bench go crazy like that for Cade was really cool. Some about walk-ons whenever they come into play, it's just uh, makes it so much more exciting and so much more fun. So anyways... There you have it. There's the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, which I just noticed I didn't click over to the next topic. Y'all knew what I'm doing. Hey, listen, it's tough, man, with this sickness and this junk. It's tough. So I appreciate everybody bearing with me. And hopefully by uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, I'll be fully over it because I'm just battling through. But that's not all right. It's not going to stop me. I got all the day quill. I got all the uh, cough drops. Even got this thing called vape, vape inhale where... Vapo inhale, something like that. I don't know. It's supposed to clear up the sinuses. It's almost like smelling salts. Pretty good stuff. So anyways, we'll power through. We'll make it work. But appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.